Hi, this is Irv Shapiro with Make With Tech. Today, you're going to be watching a delicious video because who doesn't like cookies? Today, I'm going to be teaching you how to find shapes, pictures on the internet. Pictures in a special file format called SVG, but there are thousands and thousands of them. And then I'm going to show you how to take those pictures and turn them into real cookie cutters. Cookie cutters you can use with a recipe I'm going to provide you to make your own cookies. So if you want to learn how to make your own cookie cutters on a 3D printer, and you want to learn about the food safety of using cookie cutters that were produced on a 3D printer, and you want to learn about an engineer's cookie cutter recipe that doesn't require a stand mixer. Well, stay tuned and let's learn something together. Today's video is sponsored by me. That's because here at Make With Tech, our team has produced a wonderful piece of software called Models by Make With Tech. It's a place you go to on the internet to find things to 3D print. But what's unique about it is you find templates and then you customize them to make creative, unique objects. Now, the site is completely free. There are thousands of people using it completely free. It's only if you want to use advanced features that you need to subscribe to a premium paid subscription. And those subscriptions help support this channel and everything we do here. I'm going to get started by asking you the question, is it safe to eat this cookie that was produced using this cookie cutter printed in PLA on a 3D printer. So let's look at a slide together and cover some of these points. PLA and PETG are generally considered food safe. In fact, a lot of bottles that you get soda, some people call it pop, sparkling beverages or other beverages are made out of PETG but they're not 3D printed. They're made with a different process. And here's where the complication comes in. As you may know, 3D printers work by printing layers of material and building them up. You can think of an image in your mind's eye of a brick house. Now, even if you put the bricks right on top of each other, the layers right on top of each other, there are small gaps potentially between the layers. Think of the mortar between bricks. And those small gaps can trap food particles and even can trap bacteria or other nasty stuff. Now, of course, you can wash off your 3D printed cookie cutters, and you should. And that may be sufficient, but might not be perfect. So you might think you'll wash it off in hot water. Well, if your cookie cutter is made of PLA, it will begin to go soft at about 60 or 70 degrees Celsius. That's not so hot. And if you want to wash it in a higher temperature, let's say you want to put it in your dishwasher, then you should probably print your cookie cutters out of PETG. Now, the first thing to consider is that cookie dough is moist, but not wet. It's not like you're using this to make an ice cube tray where water's gonna sit in it a long time, or you're attempting to boil water in this. The cookie dough is moist, but it's not very wet. The second thing to consider is how long does this really come in contact with the cookie dough? Not very long at all. And the third thing to consider is we're baking these cookies at a temperature above boiling, at a relatively high temperature. So in terms of the gaps and the ability for them to trap bacteria, I mean, we need to use a little common sense here. Would I use a 3D printer 
to produce thousands of cookie cutters that I'm distributing for people to use for years and years? I would not. But I also use other things in a kitchen that have the potential to trap bacteria. Does anybody here watching the video use a wood cutting board? Well, yeah, they may be sealed, but that sealant wears off. You're cutting it with a, on it with a knife. You get gaps, you get nooks, you get all sorts of spaces that could track bacteria. What about a rolling pin made of wood? So overall, it would be irresponsible for me to say that cookie cutters printed in PLA, PETG on a 3D printer are absolutely safe. On the other hand, personally, I'm not worried about it. Because, you know, worst comes to the worst, you can decide to just reprint them every time and use them once and throw them away. Now, the next thing to consider is the nozzle itself. The nozzle, the standard nozzles on a 3D printer are made of brass. Brass includes lead. Unfortunately, here in the United States, a lot of our water pipes still have lead in them. We have brass faucets that may have lead in them. So once again, the question is, how long is this cookie cutter in contact with the cookies and is it an issue? Once again, the answer is it could be. Technically, you could get trace amounts of lead in your cookies. So do I worry about it? I don't worry about it. But if you are worried about it and you're going to make a lot of cookie cutters, of course, I would switch to an all steel nozzle. And you can get 3D printer nozzles for your device that are all steel and you've eliminated many of those issues. The third question in general is, do you keep your 3D printers food safe? Well, if you have a commercial kitchen, you probably have to use all stainless steel and steam it periodically. In our home kitchens, I don't think we're quite that particular. Once again, I'm comfortable with that. So let's go back to the slide and review. PETG and PLA are considered food safe, but you have to worry about the small gaps. You need to, if you're going to wash these cookie cutters off in hot water, PETG would be better. Stainless steel is optimal if you're doing this a lot. You shouldn't print things other than cookie cutters where they sit in liquid for a long time. That's not considered a good idea. And finally, if you wanna make these absolutely safe, just spray them with polyurethane. Let them dry for a couple days because polyurethane requires a couple days of drying to fully harden. And then you have a completely enclosed object where you don't have to worry about gaps or lead or anything else. Me personally, I print these, I use them. If I'm concerned, I throw them out, I print a new one the next time. Okay, now for some fun. First, we need to find images to use for making our 3D print. Well, the cookie maker template that we're going to be using at Models by Make with Tech requires an SVG file. That's just a, a format of a graphics file. And you can go into Google and just type in SVG and you'll find thousands of them. But what we want is we want a solid image, ideally in one color, let's say a black and white image, where our program will automatically trace the outline. So how do we find those? Let's try this together. One way we can find them is to go to the site called publicdomainvectors.org. Now, public domain means these are things are free, you can use them, you in many cases can even use them commercially. So what are we gonna look for? And this site has 70,000 images, but not all of them are gonna make great cookie cutters. So first we're gonna go down here and we're going to click SVG. Then we're going to go up here under search and we're gonna enter in silhouette and hit a return here. And that's going to search for SVG files that are silhouettes. So let's look here. And what you wanna look for is silhouettes where the outline is pretty simple. 
And there are not a lot of little details, like this one probably wouldn't be good. This teddy bear would be great. So let's click on the teddy bear here, and we're going to download it. So it's going to be in our download folder. So that's the first thing you want to do. Then you want to head over to models.makewithtech.com. Now, this is the application that was produced by our team in order to allow you to search for things you want to 3D print, but it's a little bit different. There are wonderful sites like Thingiverse and Printables and Creality Cloud and My Mini Factory that let you search for things, download them, and print them. Models by Make With Tech is different because you search for a template versus a model. And you can search among thousands of templates. And when you find a template you like, and I'm going to show this to you on the screen, you can change some of the parameters that define that template. So we're going to go here and I'm going to click on search. And you can see the cookie cutters are coming up on the front page. Um, but let's instead type in cookie just to see what's available on here. And you can see there are a variety of cookie cutter templates available on here. We're going to pick the cookie cutter machine. Now that's actually a template that I built for the site. I haven't built the majority of these. And if we click on 3D here, we can see this is what our cookie cutter will look like. That looks a lot like this, doesn't it? But what's special here is we can use that image we found on the web. So I'm going to click on this little square box. That's going to start the customizer. Let's go to the customizer. Oh, I got to sign in first. Now, let me tell you something here. Anybody can sign up to use models that make with tech.com to search for and customize models completely free. I'm giving you my personal commitment. It'll be free forever. Now, there are advanced features, the ability to create templates, to use an online editor, to save your parameters, to have it generate more than one model at a time. These advanced features do require a subscription, but the basic features of searching for a model and customizing it are completely free. What's more, you can search for models on the Thingiverse site. Thingiverse has thousands of, of models in the right format. The right format are called open SCAD templates that you can customize with our customizer. Now let's go back here and go to sign up. And I don't need to sign up today because I already have an account. So I'm going to click on sign in and I'm going to put in my account and my password and click sign in. Whoops. I have to type my password correctly. If you want to see your password, you can click on that. I'm not going to show you my password. Probably not a good idea. And I'm going to sign in. And because I had typed in cookies before, it remembers that. And it took me to the screen. And now I'm going to click on the customizer. Okay, now here's a picture of our cookies. Looks familiar. If there are more pictures that were posted by the author, here's a picture of a cookie cutter. You can see those here. Now, the simplest thing we can do is we can select a model and we can click on preview. And it will show you a rendering, a rough rendering of what that model would look like. But I don't want another rabbit. I want something different. Well, there's some other samples included with the cookie cutter maker. And so if I go down here, and this is how I change parameters for a model. Let's say I select Christmas tree. And now I click on preview. Now you'll see this would produce a Christmas tree cookie cutter. But what if I want it to be much taller? Well, the dimensions are another set of parameters. And as the author of this model, I defined 
which parameters you can vary. So as a creator, if you're creating models for other people, you have full control over that. So let's say I want this to be a little narrower, maybe 70 millimeters wide, smaller. This was a 100 millimeter cookie cutter, but I'm gonna make it actually a little taller, 120 millimeters high. So I can put in those values. I can click on preview. And there we have a cookie cutter for a taller and narrower Christmas tree. Now, some models will actually have many, many different parameters. And maybe I want to go and save those parameters so I can reuse them later so I don't have to remember. I can click on parameters here. I can give this parameter set a name. And let me spell that correctly and say save parameter set. And now I can come back later and I'll be able to select that and restore those values. So let's verify this one more time. And now I'm gonna click on generate. And what it's doing now is it's sending the template and the selected parameters off to the Amazon AWS cloud, where we have some very powerful computers that will be rendering this model, creating this model. Now, for very simple models, this will take seconds, but a cookie cutter is actually quite complex because it has to take this shape, it has to trace the outside of the shape. That trace operation takes a little bit of time. Then it has to extrude it up. So it's gonna take a few minutes. While it's doing that, I'm going to create and add my own model here. So if I go down over here and I click on this box, I can go over to the download directory. And remember we downloaded that bear SVG? I can open up that bear. Ah, the model's done. We'll go back to that in a minute. I can open up that bear, but I also have to tell it here under sample that I don't want to use the Christmas tree. I want to use the file I specified. And now I can preview that. And there's our teddy bear. Well, I want him a little narrower. I think that doesn't really look quite right. So let's make it 70 wide. Let's double check that here it says, please enter a file below, because if you select one of these other things, it will use that instead of the teddy bear. And we have the bear selected here. So we're going to preview. Ah, that looks about right. So let's send that one off to be converted into a cookie cutter. Now, if you send things off to be converted into a cookie cutter, if you click on the hourglass up here, you'll see those in your queue. If you have a free subscription, it'll only let you do one at a time. If something's already there processing, it won't let you do a second one. But if you have a paid subscription, it will let you have multiple generated files working at the same time. Now, if you click over here on the results section, you'll see the various cookie cutters that I've worked on. So the STL files are the files we're interested in. It actually puts the original script file and any other files that were used out there with it. We don't need those. We only need this STL file. Let's look at it in 3D. And there's the Christmas tree that we made. So I could take now and I can download that Christmas tree and see this download pop up. Well, if I had specified that I want to accept tips from makers, from end users that use my templates, there would be an option here to send a dollar, two dollars, five dollars to the creator. It's always optional at this point. There will be paid models in the future. These are optional. We're going to go ahead and dismiss this. And let me open this up in Cura, which is the 3D printer slicer that I'm using for my models. Because you have to take your 3D model and convert it into individual layers to 3D print it. And then you send that layered version. You can see this here. Here's our 
template ready to be printed, in this case on the FL Sun Super Racer, one of the printers that I recently reviewed. Okay, so that's all working properly. Let's go back here and see that's still working. So while that's working, oh, it just finished. So let's view that model page. We'll see we have another example here. And there we have our teddy bear. So you have the ability to find an SVG file on the web, to go to models.makewithtech.com, and you're going to want to select search for cookies and select the cookie cutter machine. When you're in the customizer, you're going to want to make sure that this entry is set to please enter a file below, and then you enter your file here on this screen, and then you can preview it by clicking on preview, or you can create your file for 3D printing by clicking on generate. Okay, so we have our cookie cutter, but we're not done. The goal is not to produce cookie cutters, it's to produce cookies. So I'm gonna walk you through how an engineer bakes cookies. You see, as an engineer, I look for the simplest way to do things. So every recipe I looked at said I have to take out the mixer. And that's a bunch of stuff I don't want to deal with. And I sure don't want to have to clean it all up. So there was a food processor sitting on the corner of the counter. That looked like a much easier proposition. And I know they have a special blade for dough. I don't know where that is. It had the regular blade in it. I figured, how bad could it be? So I googled a bunch of recipes, I found a bunch of recipes, I ran into another problem. You see, I don't eat dairy, and so I wanted to make my cookies with margarine. But a lot of the recipes said substituting margarine for butter will work, but cookies will come out too flat. A lot of complications. Finally, I put together what I thought would work, and I'll show you a little tweak I made that ended up excellent. Not only are these cookies delicious, but they're, they look really good. So let's look at this screen together. Now you'll see here the ingredients that are in my cookie batter. It's one stick of non-dairy margarine. A stick, you know, they're about this long. They say they're half a cup. Normally the recipe calls for a full cup of butter but because margarine is thinner, I thought I could get away with this. Two thirds cup of sugar, some salt, a large egg, all at room temperature. That's very important. Makes the chemistry work better. Vanilla extract, flour, you'll see it says two to two and a half cups. I'll show you why. You start with two cups, then you might have to add a bit more. And here's my secret that I didn't see really online but I decided if without the dairy they were gonna be flatter, I don't make them puff up a little bit. So I put in a quarter teaspoon of baking powder and wow, it did the trick. Here's how I put all of those ingredients together. You take the margarine, you cut it into about quarter inch pieces, you put it in the food processor with the egg because you need the liquid from the egg to make it all do its stuff. Then you spin it on high speed, 30 seconds, 45 seconds, until it sort of smooths out. Then you add all the other ingredients except for the flour, you spin it until it's smooth. Then you add one cup of flour, you spin it, it gets smooth again. The second cup of flour, it'll stay pretty smooth. And it will be sort of like peanut butter, that consistency. That's not gonna work for dough. But you take that stuff out you put it on a floured cutting board and you start mixing by hand in a bit of the extra flour until you get to a Play-Doh-like consistency. For me, that was about another half a cup. Then you flatten it out, you roll it out to about a quarter inch thick with your rolling pin. I didn't know where the rolling pin was. What's a rolling pin? Well, it looks like a bottle of wine to me. So I wrapped my bottle of wine in, in saran wrap and rolled it out, it worked perfect. Then, and this I learned on the internet, 
Then I took a cookie sheet, put a piece of parchment paper on it, but didn't put any spray oil or anything on it, just left it dry. That keeps the cookies from spreading too much. I cut out my shapes with my handy cookie cutter. I think this cookie cutter was in contact with the dough for about three seconds, maybe. Not a lot of opportunity for bad things to happen. I peeled the extra dough off. I used the spatula to scoop up the cookies, put them on the parchment paper, baked them for about 12 minutes. So I think it'll tend to take about 10 to 14 minutes at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and you end up with perfect cookies. They really look good and they taste great. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed this video. I had a blast making this. This is one of the most fun videos I've made. If you do enjoy it and you bake cookies, go over to forum.makewithtech.com. When you sign in, it's completely free over there, completely free. All you, you can take and post pictures of the cookies you made. Subscribe to the channel, click on the like button, share this with everyone you know, leave comments below, and let's continue to learn things together.